If you click this thumbnail hoping you get a five minute fix to grow your business, forget it. I'm not the right person for you. Because I'm gonna give it you straight up and real. I'm not gonna fuck around. I'm gonna tell you how to grow your business, how to grow your wedding photography business. Because it isn't as easy as people may say it is. It's quite difficult actually, but you can do it. And, all, and, and, and from all you guys who are watching this video, just some of you will actually do it and some will never do it. But that's okay, because you have to try it. If you want to skip straight to the tips, go to the chapters below. But I would stick around because I'm going to tell you a lot of, of important things about growing your business as a wedding photographer. So right now I'm building a YouTube channel and I just started my channel. I have around 3000 subscribers, maybe a little bit more. And the way I have to do it is basically the same as I have to build my wedding photography business. But that's already built. So if you're curious what I do as a wedding photographer, just go ahead and check my Instagram. You can instantly see what I do and why I'm here telling you what to do, basically. Um, but when I was figuring out my YouTube, I was like, fuck, I need to do it the same thing as I did with my wedding photography way, 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 like 10 years ago, longer actually. The same way. So right now I'm building my YouTube channel, pretty raw and how I am. And I say, fuck, yeah, I say, yeah, it's, it's, it's 18 plus probably then. Um, but I'm very straight up and I just want to tell you what really works and what doesn't work. So I wrote down some stuff. Uh, I don't want to make a really fancy video because it's about the information in the video, not about cool effects and all that bullshit because you want to know how to grow your business and it's a serious matter. So let's start with the first, the first thing. And before we start, I have to tell you one thing because I think that's, that's a general rule in life, but also for photography, a lot of people are looking for what they want, but not for what they need. And that's the same thing with wedding photography. Look for what you need and not what you want. And I'm gonna give you what you need. Daddy's gonna tell you what you need, baby. <laughs> so first thing, and that's one of the, if I give a presentation, sometimes I give presentations to people, uh, students, or uh, they invite me for a, a lecture or something. It's the first thing I always tell people is the USPs. You have to find your USPs. And USPs stand for unique selling points. So stuff that makes you very unique that can sell yourself. So if you can if you can jump really high, there's not really a very unique selling point for wedding photography. So find stuff that works for wedding photography. So if you would tell me, if I would ask you what's very unique about you, and you would say, well, photography is my passion, I don't fucking care. Because it's my passion too, and it's everyone is watching. It's their passion. Passion is a, is a, is is for a lot of creative people. So that doesn't count because it's not unique. Think of unique stuff. For example, um, people. When when I photograph people like you guys watching me, you get get really relaxed. I'm just a really relaxed guy, and I know how to get people very relaxed and make them pose without them even knowing they're posing. So I'm not very, I don't put people in like a special pose. I just let them do things and we talk a lot of stuff and then I make photos and suddenly we have a beautiful pose. That's how I work. I'm, I know how to trick people in posing. But also I'm a guy. I'm a, actually, I'm a Dutch guy in case you didn't notice. And Dutch guys are very, very tall and I am very tall. So um, I'm quite a minority in wedding photography because it's a women dominant occupation. There are more women than men in wedding photography, so it makes me a minority, and I like to be a minority because I can, I can stick stick my head out, and people will notice me. So there's a lot of things that make me um, stand out from the crowd, and those USPs I thought of um, made me. Um, I, I've made them my own, and I use them in my work. So when you got you find your USPs, and I will find at least three three USPs. Maybe you get four, uh, four or five. You start to implement them in your website, in your socials, in your posts, and everything. Show people what makes you so unique, and don't tell them this makes me unique. But but don't try to make it very obvious. Just try to slip them in, and so people notice what your USBs are. So if you're very laid back in the shoot, make sure you got behind the scenes footage that you are actually laid back. So 
make sure USBs come out. It's a very important thing. Why a lot of startups don't succeed in their work or don't grow the business because they don't understand their clients. You have to understand your clients. So what a lot of startups do, they show what they want to show the people, but they don't show what people want to see. And that's a very, very big difference. If you grab your portfolio and you're going to look at the photos and you ask yourself, is this a photo I like a lot or is this a photo that people would like a lot? There's a very big difference. So I would start showing people on your socials, also on your portfolio, on your website, photos um, that people would like. Because if you show people what, you, what they like, they have more chance of they choosing you. Because if you show people what you like, they don't fucking care what you like. So some people would say, yeah, but then I'm not doing what I really love to do. No, that's not, not true. Because your clients are the people giving you an assignment to photograph the wedding. And it's you, the photographer, that has to make the photos that they like. See it as that. So start making photos that people want to see. Make it interesting. Because it's commercially very important that people like your photos because of what they see. So start looking at your portfolio differently. So my third tip is also very important. That's to think very small. And that feels a little counterintuitive because why would you think small? You have to think fucking big, man. We have to, we have to grow our business. We have to think that we are, we are gonna conquer the world. No, you're not gonna fucking conquer the world. First thing you do, and that's how I started. I wanted to be the best of the city where I lived. So try to be the best of the area you live in your city if you become the best of your city which is quite easy to do i guess um, you can expand it become the the best of your um your state or your uh, province uh, depends on where you live after you conquer your state <laughs> it feels a little bit american but if you if you if you know you're one of the one of the best or the best in your state try to conquer a part of your country the west part or the east part and then Try to conquer the country, but start small. Don't think too big. A lot of people are thinking of, oh, I want to shoot abroad. I want to shoot destination weddings. No, just start small. Start to make sure that the, that the ball is rolling and you get weddings. If the wedding is rolling, you can make better photos. Start to make photos that people want to see and you will grow. You will grow. You will grow if you want to grow. And the fourth is also very important is networking make sure that everybody fucking knows you sorry i say fuck but that's who i am i say fuck make sure that everybody knows you because if everybody knows you they can they start thinking of you so make sure vendors know who you are make sure that um wedding dress suppliers suit suppliers everybody knows who you are people know who you are make a special photo series and maybe you can get published in the, in the newspaper or a special website so make sure your work gets um get get spread that's that's very important and also follow photographers start to chat with the photographers a lot of people on my instagram send me dms and i always try to react to them and help starting photographers and then i will know their names i never know what it's good for so start making friends with other photographers with a lot of people because it will help you i know a lot of people i think in my country almost Everybody knows me because I've been in this game for a long time. I did a lot of interesting stuff. I've been on TV, all kind of things. So people fucking know me. And when they know you, they're gonna think of you. Wedding planners, always, I, I get so many requests from wedding planners to work together. Because they want me as a photographer. Because I'm, you can't believe it, I'm a nice guy. And I know how shit works. I know how my photography works. So they want to book me because I know if they book me, things will be very good. And that's what you're gonna reach. You have to know, you have to make sure that everyone knows you. So also use LinkedIn, because that's also a place where you can spread your name. And the last one, number five, is analyze photographers or maybe your competition. And how do we do that? So it's, it's actually very simple. What you do, you're gonna look up photographers, maybe me, and you're gonna make a little Excel sheet. You're gonna put in the name, you're gonna put in the website, their uh, social links. And you're gonna analyze the photographer but not only me a lot of photographers and check out what they do check out their instagram how much do they post what do they say how do they interact with the people um 
go to the website. How does the website look? Is this website very complex? Is it very simple? What are the are the USBs? Because every good photographer uses their USB. So go and analyze those people. And if you analyze multiple photographers, you eventually will see a kind of a pattern. And if you see the pattern, you know what to do with yourself. So you can use the same pattern, but then with your own USBs. So it's just a matter of analyzing stuff. It's not sitting, wishing, waiting for someone to send you an email so they can work with you. You have to actively do something for it. So these are the five tips I think are very important to grow your business. And there are not tips that you can just do now and will grow. No, it, it takes a year or maybe two years if you start doing it. And I still, till this day, do these same things over and over again. I start, I keep on reinventing myself every time. I never stop. Even my USBs change. Well, I'm still a man and I'll probably always be a man. But um, I, I'm, I'm always checking out myself. Am I still happy do, doing what I do? I want to change stuff. And that's, for instance, YouTube. I wanted to make a YouTube channel. Never did it. It's all new for me. And I think it's going great because you just subscribed to me. So thank you very much. Um, that's how it works. So enough shit to, for this for today. Now it's time for you to do your work. <laughs>